Welcome, everyone, to Diversify's Wealth, Health, and Happiness interview series, where our mission is to have you live in a life filled with, like I said, wealth, health, and happiness. Today, I have a very special guest, the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Gary Ware, who is a strategic play consultant, maybe my favorite title ever, and the founder of Breakthrough Play. He's got a fantastic TEDx talk, if you haven't seen it. He's a facilitator, a coach with a passion to utilizing play as a transformation. Gary's goal is through breakthrough plays to help people have their life be happier, which of course resonates with us, and teaching them through play and how individuals, how they can incorporate it into their life and work to improve their confidence, creativity, and relationships. Thanks for joining me, Gary. So happy to be here. Uh, thank you so much for having me, Andrew. My pleasure. So everyone's dying to know. Tell me what led you to to break through play as a career. Well, uh, I would like to say that it's been the plan the whole time, but that's not the case. And I, I, I love the quote by Mike Tyson that everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Wow. And that's essentially what happened to me. My background is in marketing communications. I thought that's what I was going to, that's what I was going to do. I, you know, cut my teeth working in um, advertising companies, moving up the ranks. I found myself as a director, had a team about 30 or so under me, burning myself out day in and day out. And thought that was part of the gig, you know, um, you probably heard the phrase, oh, you know, I'll sleep when I'm dead. I'll sleep when I'm dead. And yeah. that was that was the thing. And then I took an improv class and that changed everything. And it for me, it's so funny thinking about this. I was I, on this sort of optimization path. Of, I want to optimize everything in my life so I can be as efficient as possible. Hey, and that's me. And I took this class as a way to get better public speaking because someone said, hey, this will definitely help you think on your feet. So I said, I'm all in. What it actually did do, it made me realize that I was not playing because after that two hour class, I felt amazing. Matter of fact, when I got home, my wife was like, are you drunk? And I was like, no, I'm not. And so that was the little seed that was planted. And then I was on this sort of kick of People need to know about improv, which turned into me learning about play and what I call purposeful play. And again, this was always in service of the people that I led. And I thought the next logical path on my career journey was to own your own agency. And uh, the opportunity, um, you know, to be a co-founder at an agency, that was great until it wasn't. <laughs> and then I found myself... Uh, with a business breakup um, after being in business with them for three years. And I was at the crossroads of, do I just go find another another just job or do I do something different? And I decided to um, become a facilitator and, and teach people something what I know different. about play. Yeah, yeah. I love it. So, I love it. so, okay. So you talk about burnout. You talk about, um, you know, powering up instead of powering through. Uh, in your in your TED talk, so talk to us the signs how we know someone's burning out and how do you prevent it? Yeah, so this is the thing about burnout. It's 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 kind of tricky because by the time you're realizing that you're burnt out, you're probably too far gone. Uh, but burnout, it it almost like hijacks your brain, where you know the first thing that goes is self care. It's very ironic in that. The thing you need to do is to take care of yourself, you know, like slow down and things like that. But because you're in this mental state, you tend to work more than you should. And then, you know, your then your work starts to suffer. Whereas the things that you probably are very proficient at, you're starting to make little mistakes here and there. And and it's this slippery slope where because you're making these little mistakes is probably causing some frustration, which makes you to work even more, which puts you into this hole of burnout over and over and over again. And so that's the big things is, you know, your work is starting to to suffer. You're not taking care of yourself as much as you um, should. And then 
now you're going to have lack of motivation. Now the thing that used to light you up, maybe your job or the things like that, you don't even want to do. You're just like, oh, just, I have no motivation to do this. I'm just going to stay at home. you know. And then this is the other, which keeps you in this rat race, is because the performance is, is slipping and you know you can do better and you're not getting enough rest like you should, you become preoccupied with work when you're not at work. It's just all that you're thinking about. And so there's so many other signs of burnout, but those are the big ones. And I like to help people get to a state where it's hard to prevent it because again, the reason why you got into it was probably because you loved what you did and you wanted to do more of it. And then it just became pretty slope. And so it's starting to be an environment where you can keep that at bay and try to identify the signs quicker and take some actions to mitigate that. So let's, let's talk about that, Gary. So how can fun or play mitigate this? How can you, if by inserting that into your day, week, life, work balance, how can that help and how much of it is, is, necessary, right? I mean, I run a company. I don't want people playing all having playing tag all day instead of working, but I understand the the benefits. So where's that balance? Yes. So the first thing, and, and I'm I love that you brought that up of, you know, we we don't want you know people to be sort of playing tag and, and whatnot. Um it's all about the mindset. It's all about how we see play. As adults, you know, our society views play as a frivolous thing, goofing off, something that kids do. Right. Instead of seeing that that is one aspect of play, sort of prankster joking play is one aspect. Of um, and again, as I, you know, started to pull myself out of this burnout and realize the the missing thing was play, I started to dig into the science of play. And so um, if you think about any activity that you were doing, where the activity itself was the reward, where you felt like time just went by like that um, and you were so engrossed in it. That's the same thing as, you know, is play. And and some people would call it flow. And so that's the other thing of seeing, um, you know, seeing it as a flow state. And that's so you can get into your work. So that's one aspect of play. How can you see your work as something that you love to do? And so that, again, when you see it with that mindset, you're going to see challenges and obstacles as something to overcome rather than just a drain on resources. So by changing your mindset, you're going to reduce the potential to get burnt out because the things that may frustrate you is now a challenge. So that's the first thing. So I just want to sort of pause there. So it's a mental shift, essentially, is what you're saying. Yes. And then the next thing is how can you do activities that are going to keep you at your prime? Yeah. So, so Gary, how do we, how do we show us an example? How can we incorporate yeah. this into our day and lives? Teach us, teach us something. Give, go to the well for me. Yes. And so it's important that I follow a thing called the M framework for rest. This allows us to be the best version of ourselves. And the three M framework, it's macro, meso, and, um, my, sorry, macro, micro, and meso breaks. Okay. And the macro thinking, actually, forgive me, let me rewind that the micro. Most of the time in between work, we were probably checking our phone. Oh, yeah. Scrolling social media, checking email. We don't really give ourselves proper breaks in between tasks. And as a result, we're continuously draining our energy. Uh, Microsoft actually did um, a study because of the global pandemic and everyone working from home and over them. And they found that by third or fourth meeting, brain scans, people's brains are <laughs> fried. The stress going is because they don't take breaks. And then they had a, an experiment group where they took breaks, micro breaks throughout the day. And they found that every meeting their brains are refreshed and ready to go. And so my invite to everyone is how can you 
It can be as simple as five minutes or it can be a little bit longer, but in between tasks, do something that is going to invigorate yourself. And again, it could be as simple as, you know, when you're done with the meeting, instead of going into, um, you know, something else or checking your email or doing something that is probably going to be draining, get up, walk around. I personally like to turn on some music. Again, we're adding the spirit of play. How can we make this fun and enjoy, uh, enjoyable? Um, that's going to power yourself up so that you have the ability to jump back into your work and get into that flow state faster. And as a result, you're going to be more productive instead of because they say every time you check email or you get distracted, it is a waste of 30 minutes of your time. And I think I read somewhere, Gary, that the average person checks their cell phone it's it's something stupid like 1500 times a day like it's some astronomical uh hold on let me check my phone right it's some it's like some astronomical number right that, yes. that like you can't even conceive that you actually have checked your phone a thousand plus times a day i mean it's and and so i totally get it that they take this opportunity to to have these micro breaks right? Where you can rejuvenate. I mean, it makes sense, right? It's, it's, if you're running sprints, take, you, you take a stop for a second and get a drink of water and you run again, right? I mean, and, yep. and if you're all oh, days, a sprint totally makes sense. So, okay. Yeah. So I love it. So give us an example, give us a, yeah. give us, give us one. Yeah. And so what I love to do is when I'm, so actually I'm going to, I'm going to do this after, you know, this call I'm, and because I'm in a place where the weather is nice, but you know, you adapt and do something for you. I go out and I'm literally, I, I'm this disciplined with it. I, I set a timer. I'm going to go out and sit on my, on my back patio. And again, no technology, nothing. And I just sit there and um, I have these like little hand puzzles. Like, you know, again, like you sort of move the things around and you try to get everything sort of lined up. Right. Rubik's cube, you know, whatever, it doesn't really matter. It's the fact that you're not connected to your work. You're doing something with your hands. You're doing something that is challenging you in a fun way. And that is going to allow your body to power back up again. So that when you jump into the work, you're ready to go. And, and you can get into it faster. And again, it's play. And so that sort of goofing off, you know, you said, yeah, you know, I don't want everyone goofing off all the time. You're absolutely right. But imagine if there were set moments where people can sort of like, you know, be sort of goofy or whatever the case may be, and then jump back into the work. You, you remember recess? It's like that. Right. So what's the, what's the science behind it, Gary? How much more productive, right? I'm a business owner. Uh, yes. and, and okay, great. So you've convinced me to let my employees go play, right? What, but now convince me that the, the what's the science say for the, the, the intrinsic benefit, the pro I'm sure it leads to X yes. more productivity. What, what is the science? All right. All right. So I will tell you the opposite. What's really happening is that because people aren't taking breaks, they are three times more likely to make a mistake in their work um okay. after you hit after you hit 90 minutes your brain needs that that sort of break anyway and so it's going to take longer to do the same amount of work and so that's that's the problem is that most people aren't taking breaks and they are spending more time on tasks that they should be completing faster there's more mistakes so therefore now we have rework and again because it's just what we're used to, we, we're not really studying that. Like, it's just the norm. It's like, oh, we power through, we power through, we power through. And I invite people to do this. That's why I said five to 10 minutes. Again, we probably do that in something that, you know, we do unconsciously, like check our email or maybe scroll sure. through social media. We have wasted time. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. So imagine if you just said, hey, we're going to, you know, and there's a lot of science behind this too, is a Pomodoro technique. And there's stuff like that where they say, hey, work a set amount of time, take a very specific break, and then get back in. For me personally, the Pomodoro technique, which is a 25 minute um, focus session, five minute break, doesn't work for me. I'd like to do a 90 minute 
um, you know, 45 to 90 minute session with a longer break with a, uh, with a um, 15 to 20 minute break. Okay. And then and, and I tell people, I said, test it out, you know, see how, um, you know, how quickly you're getting through tasks. And here's another thing to help people uh, because most people are creative professionals. Like what I mean by creative is not like you're doing like creating like ads or anything like that. But we're, what I mean by creative work is that we're not doing work that is something that can be done in a factory. We have to solve challenges. And when you're in the work, it's challenging to be creative. So I like to say leave an ellipse on your work. Get to a place where you, you can, you know, you know that you probably could finish it. And this is where people mostly power through. They're like, oh, I know what I need to do. I say, that's the point where you need to take a break. Because guess what? You take a break. Your brain knows what it needs to do. It's going to be working on that behind the scenes while you're rejuvenating. The moment you get back into it, because you know what you need to do, your brain, boom, it's going to be ready. There's no needing to like sort of get structured. You just jump back into it. Right. It, it, it's intuitive when you think about it. Right. Yeah. So, okay. What's the most fun you ever had at work? Most fun. I, so Fun, funny story, and this is typically what happened. I worked at a startup. I was employee. I, th- I was employee thirty-two. I was a digital marketing agency, and we every day. It you, if someone was looking from the outside in, they would think, "Do they get anything done?" Because it just looked like it was just you know sort of shenanigans. However. Looking back, we worked long hours because we had some very high-end clients that was we were that were spending like millions of dollars with us. However, you know, we would go, we would have very important client meetings. After those client meetings, we we typically, um, you know, this is where people probably got the thing of like, oh, foosball, foosball, because we had a foosball table and we would have foosball tournaments, and then sure. we would get into the work. Um, you know, we had spontaneous nerf gunfights and and things like that and but i think this is the main thing and we didn't realize this until like it was too late is that we had each other's back when groups play you know together what you're doing is you're creating psychological safety you're creating that feeling that people can be themselves and they can speak up when you need to right you probably can were making mistakes yeah. Right. And I would imagine it, it breaks down uh, hierarchical barriers, yeah. too. Right. If you're I, I agree. the president's playing with the, mm-hmm. the, the operations person or whatever. Right. And they're they're their buddies. Right. I mean, they're teaming up yeah. or playing against it. I would I would think that's it's smart. It's really smart. Yep. So, OK, so at our firm, we promote wealth, health and happiness. What advice do you have? in the realm of happiness for people maximizing and finding their happiness? Yes. For me, I, and this is just, you know, my own experience and my own sort of POV. So take it with that. I like to say, what are the things that bring you an immense amount of joy, intrinsic joy, right? That you probably aren't doing because you were trying to you know, work or things like that. And how can you schedule it in your day some way, shape, or form? Um, an example. Um, so a sister, my sister, uh, growing up, she used to play with um, dolls. You know, she, she had her little doll sets and she had like all, you know, all of that. And then, you know, as she got older, she, she stopped. Um, and we broke it down. And what it was, wasn't necessarily the fact that she was playing with dolls, but she loved nurturing. You know, she was like the mama. She like she she did all that stuff that brought her joy, like that aspect of playing with dolls. That's how she saw it. And so what she did instead was instead of having dolls, now she has plants. And that is her play. That is her joy. And she actually discovered rediscovered that through the pandemic when she was like, you know, trying to you know stay sane and whatnot. And then now there's all these plants. And so she. She like gets into it. Like she, you know, she has her, you know, she's all right. What do I need to do for this? What do I need to do for that? And for her, she can do that like all day, all, you know, 
all night, you know, that brings her a lot of joy. Right. And she doesn't, you know, she has amounts of time for it, but it is that break that her brain needs in between the work. Um, it allows her to tune out the negativity in the world and it keeps her, you know, happy. So that's my advice to people is like, what brings you joy? How can you add that to your life in some way, shape or form? And then schedule it. And by the way, it's a lot creepier, a lot less creepy to playing with plants all day for your grown sister <laughs> than playing with dolls, a bunch of cabbage patch kids. That's right. great. No, and I think, uh, I mean, sincerely, that I think that's fascinating and, and spot on, right? I mean, you schedule joy in your day. Why shouldn't you? I mean, especially if it has all these intrinsic benefits and you get to enjoy your day and life better. I love it. All right, Gary, last question for you. Leave us with gotcha. your $1 million tip. What's, what's the tip you hope everyone takes away uh, from today's interview? The tip that as you're listening and reflecting on what was just said is that play is a necessity. And it, I will go to say it's just as important as breathing because we are wired for play. And when you take that out of your life, you're actually suffering from play deprivation. And the moment you add it, it's like you're going to rehydrate yourself and, and you're going to get more of that happiness. And I, I'm not really a betting man, but I will say that you will probably have more um, wealth and better health as well. Yeah, I can't see how you couldn't. All right, Gar, let everyone know how they can learn more about you, follow you, connect with you socially or however. Yes. Uh, well, if, if you, you know, any of this resonated with you and you want to talk shop, I'm at breakthroughplay.com. I'm also on LinkedIn. You know, you can look me up, Gary Ware. I'm on all the socials. Uh, feel free to hit me up. I, you know, I love this stuff and, and I love helping people find things that light them up and, and help them be, you know, more happy. All right. That's awesome. So again, Gary Ware, breakthroughplay.com, LinkedIn, connect with them. We'll put all the, your information when we share this socially. But as always, we really, really appreciate it, Gary. It was really interesting stuff. And I think people can really resonate and hopefully play a little more. So as always, I'm Andrew Rosen, president of Diversified. Stay wealthy, stay healthy, and stay happy. Take care. And thanks, Gary. Thanks. Bye.